and welcome to this review of my Focus FK2001. I previously did a video on the related FK2002, but that video is about three and a half years old now, and I've since acquired several more of these keyboards, including some very rare models, so it's past time I revisited them properly. The FK2001 was the base keyboard offering from Focus Electronic, a now defunct Taiwanese manufacturer responsible for an assortment of pretty cool and funky keyboards from the late 80s and 90s. Focus are most well known for three things, using a lot of Alps type switches in their keyboards, making keyboards with all kinds of crazy features on them, and making keyboards with, let's be kind, mediocre build quality. That said, many focuses are, in my opinion, extremely good looking keyboards, and a 2001, even if it is just a base model, is one of the prettiest of them all, I'd say. An iconic feature of this keyboard is its detachable, semi-transparent brown dust cover, which also doubles as a page holder when it's up. It's a patented feature even, and although I never use it myself, I can see how it could be useful to some people from time to time. That said, one thing the cover is definitely very useful for is for storing the keyboard with minimal damage over time from dirt and dust, which is why these boards have a relatively good chance of being in good condition if they still have the dust cover attached. In fact, normally when I'm not using a keyboard or when I'm eating or something behind my desk, I always cover it with a kitchen towel to prevent damage to the board, but with this I can just put the cover down. Now, it does stick up quite a bit when it's folded open, so if your monitor isn't up very high, it'll probably be in the way and you'll need to take it out. Thankfully, on these, it's very easy to take it out, like this. I class the keyboard's focus made into several generations, the zeroth generation, about which we don't know all that much, the first generation, which all have models that ended in 1001, to which the 2001 belongs, the second generation, which had models that were numbered in whole thousands, and the third generation, which all ended in 1200. The 2001 was unique in that it appears to have been the only keyboard they made which they kept selling from the beginning of the first generation all the way to the third one. To keep up with the times, they changed a whole bunch of things about the keyboard over time, mostly cheapifications to be honest, and as a result the 2001 is available in a wide range of slightly different versions. Additionally, because it was sold for a pretty long time, seems to be almost 10 years in fact, and because Focus was actually a pretty big player on the market, these are very common everywhere. Just as the Dell 8101 is the most common tactile Alps keyboard, the FK2001 is the most common clicky one. They had tons of these made. It's also one of the last common Alps boards that hasn't exploded in price too much, and you can frequently find these on eBay for varying and sometimes very reasonable prices. I got this new and box one for $50 and a 2002 in excellent condition for as little as £5, both from eBay. The very first models came with Blue Alps and used the big old 5-pin DIN plug. To provide compatibility with the larger set of systems, it had a duo of dip switches hidden under one of the feet, which allowed you to switch the protocol to AT, XT or PS2, as well as a separate switch that allowed you to switch the control and caps lock keys around, for which I presume they also supplied alternate keycaps. Fairly soon after, they removed the control caps lock toggle, as well as the dip switches under the feet. Instead, you could select AT or XT from a switch hidden under the badge. On some models, like this one, the holes are still present in the case, but there's no switches behind them. The holes were closed off in later revisions. Also, later models removed the AT XT switch under the badge. Much later down the line, they also changed the 5-pin DIN plug to a PS2 plug, although they kept using the 5-pin plug for a very long time. As for the switches, I mentioned before that the very first ones came with Blue Alps, but they changed to White Alps soon afterwards, so the Blue Alps models are pretty rare. White Alps don't feel or sound quite as nice as Blue Alps, but they're pretty close, especially the earlier versions, and they're still excellent switches. If you get them in pristine condition, they are, in my opinion, better than any clicky switches made today, except perhaps buckling springs. Not long after that, Focus realized that they could get superficially similar switches from a wide range of clone manufacturers at a lower cost, so they started putting all kinds of Alps clones in them, most commonly Type T1 or Type OA2 clones, but really they used all sorts, and there were even ones that came with Futaba MA clicky switches, which are a whole different kettle of fish that don't even use the same pinout, plate profile, or keycap mount. 
to my knowledge, is the only keyboard that could come with an even wider range of switches than the Ciccone KB5161, which could come with switches ranging from Alps to Cherry MX, Matsumi Miniature, Omron's SMKs and others. Basically, if you buy a 2001, you're playing the Switch lottery unless you can get a picture of what's behind the caps. Another thing they changed is the layout. It seems that originally it could come with what I call Focus or Monterey layouts, which are both layouts using a big ass enter key. Although this is very easy to reach for both ANSI and ISO users, as it's essentially a combination of the two, most big ass enter keyboards, like this Ciccone, sacrificed half the size of the backspace to make room for its mastodontic presence, and losing half the backspace sucks sweat from a baboon's balls. The Focus and Monterey layouts retained full-size backspaces though, instead opting to shorten the right shift, or put it in the recess where Windows keys would later come, respectively. I love both layouts, I think they're extremely excellent and vastly underrated. Presumably around 1995, they introduced models with Windows keys, although I've only ever seen this in Focus layout, which makes sense as the Monterey layout obviously doesn't lend itself very well to this. Also, around that time, they were well into clones territory, so if you want any chance whatsoever to get genuine complicated Alps, get a WinKeyless one. There were also WinKey models with power, wake and sleep buttons, which looked decidedly worse. Luckily, I don't have any of those. Furthermore, right from the start, there was also the ISO layout FK2002. This one never featured a big ass enter, but had a standard 102 key ISO layout instead. As this model was discontinued fairly early on, it's much rarer and has been found in far fewer configurations, and it's only ever been spotted with blue and white Alps. By the way, this one is the keyboard the original video is based on. There was also a rare separate model, the FK2000+, Plus, which was basically the same keyboard, except it featured the expanded star nav with diagonal buttons that the Focus 5001 had. Both keyboards were introduced a few years after the Focus 2001 was first released. Much, much rarer are the black models, which had eluded me twice before on eBay, and once I finally managed to snag some, they nearly got lost in the post too, but I didn't want to do this video until I could show you these, as in my opinion, they're just jaw-droppingly gorgeous. I mean, just look at that, how elegant and stylish could a keyboard possibly get? It's a shame I know of only a handful of these in existence. I even have a black 2002, which until recently was the only one of its kind that I had ever spotted. But jeez, is she a beaut or what? You can also outfit it with a set of Taihao Ti Dolch double shots, which I think doesn't look too shabby either. Another thing that changed over time was the keycaps. Focus keyboards are well known for coming with thin ABS double shots from an unknown manufacturer. Although they strongly resemble those made by Tai Hao, they have a different star-shaped molding mark on the inside compared to the cross shape of Tai Hao caps, and the wall thickness is slightly different. I don't know, maybe Focus even made them themselves. Some might scoff at the idea of thin ABS caps, but double-shot injection molding is the most durable form of legend printing, and it's impossible to wear off unless you use a sanding machine or something to grind them right down to the stem. Furthermore, it's the clearest, most high-contrast type of lettering you can get, way sharper than, for instance, dye sublimation. Besides, thin ABS caps, particularly in a tall profile like this, is a good type of keycap to get the loudest possible sound from Alps switches, and it makes them sound quite scrumptious. After Tai Hao, and especially Alps made double shots, which are thicker, these are among the better sounding Alps caps in my opinion. For a long time, basically until they got Windows keys, they came with coloured modifier legends, green for shift, red for control, and blue for alt, but win key models seem to have always come with black only lettering. And finally, there's the build quality, which is the only thing that's remained constant throughout the model's lifetime. It's pretty mediocre. The case is thin plastic, and even though it has a metal mounting plate, it flexes quite a bit, presumably because the plate isn't all that thick. It weighs about 1.1 kilos, which is kind of average maybe, but is held together at the bottom by these really annoying plastic clips that can break off pretty easily. They're not quite as bad as the ones on the FK9000, which are blood-curdlingly tight, and absolutely awful to take off every single time, but it's just nowhere near as good as an all-screw build. 
I mean, at least it has a mounting plate and the PCB doesn't just float around the case, so it's still better than a Cherry G80 3000, but especially for an Alps-based board, which were normally quite well made, it's subpar, I'd say. At the end, they even took away the signature dust cover, so it really went down in quality over time, but at the same time, they never changed the overall look, keeping the ridges at the top of the case, even when they overhaul the styling of their keyboards with the ridgeless FK5001, which joined the first generation a little later than the rest, and they kept the little plastic strip that you could write your F key shortcuts on right up until the end as well. Focus appears to have intended for the board to be succeeded by the second generation FK6000, which is also a basic 101 key keyboard which did come with the new styling, but it didn't have the F key strip or the detachable dust cover. However, the FK2001 was still being sold at this time, and in fact appears to have kept on being sold after the FK6000 discontinuation. By the way, you might be thinking that the black focuses were the very latest ones produced, as computer keyboards in the late 90s started to shift to black again, but this doesn't actually appear to be the case. Both of the ones I have use the DIN plug, and none of the black ones I know to exist, there's about 5 or 6, even have Windows keys. The black 2002 even came with Pine White Alps, placing it fairly close to the beginning of the 2001 timeline, so maybe it was a short-term experiment that didn't catch on or something. Thing. The Black 2002 does use pad printed caps though, while the Black 2001 uses double shots. Luckily, being black, they are immune to ABS's usual tendency to yellow. All in all, it's not a super well built keyboard, but it's okay, and the older ones in particular came with great switches and sound excellent. And of course, they look beautiful. I just really like these boards overall. Back in the day, they were probably somewhat generic keyboards, and the build quality really is meh, basically. But I still think they hold up very well, even nowadays. These black ones especially are just drop-dead gorgeous in my opinion. So classy and stylish without being showy in the slightest, it's almost effortless in its good looks. No RGB bells and whistles needed at all. That's it for this review. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. And following is a typing demonstration of me typing on this one, which comes with Pine White Alps.